So what's my, one of my things is they're all very you, you trust in like very sensitive data with it. Um, but I think they are the future because you can, you've got more control over your keys and so on. You can do things like uh, only allow them to exist for a certain amount of time, or perhaps once they've been downloaded, they get wiped, etc. You can also make sure they're stored encrypted and have like lockdown commands, etc. But I, I don't really understand this much to keep with. I guess you have to have some sort of authentication token before you can access. Can somebody from us to the box? So, um, QWiz, the way that it stores secrets is actually pretty cool. Uh, I'm obviously biased since I was one of the people that built it. But let me just address the comment. Uh, QWiz has been used at large scale in production at a company that means hundreds of millions of dollars per day. And it's being used in production for it's thousands of days. Yeah, for, for over three years. So this is something that's actually battle tested. It just got open sourced a couple months ago, and that's why it seems new. But it's been used internally for years, and it was really hard to open source it because reasons. Um, specifically, the way that it uh, stores secrets is actually really cool. It creates a FuseFS mount point, so it creates a virtual file system on your hosts, and it pretends that all of the secrets are just files. So from the point of view of our application, it's just accessing a file, loading a file from disk. But in reality, what's happening is it's actually going to the FuseFS file system, and it's calling an API on a centralized server. And that centralized server is the thing that loads the secrets. And since the secrets are only in memory, they're never written to disk, we make sure of it, with some capabilities of Linux, and they're never written to swap. And so if a server gets pulled out of the data center, it has exactly zero secrets in disk. There is a bootstrap problem, and the bootstrap problem is it requires a TLS certificate, and that's how it identifies the central server, that it is who it says it is. But once you have that certificate, it actually has on the C name the group that it belongs to, so it only gets the secrets that that specific host is supposed to. So literally, if you have a web host, it only gets the web secrets. And there's like this so, system with groups so how are you and stuff. Passing this, the certificate? Do that for volume? Uh, so the certificate, the way that I've been thinking about it, and I'm obviously trying to put keywords in Docker, um, mm -hmm. very biased on this, but the way that I've been thinking about it is that a container runs, and the moment the container runs, it should be ran with an environmental variable that is one use secret. So imagine it as a one use token, a single use token. And do not quote me on this, this is very much of a work in progress. But that one use token can be used to call to a centralized server and say, look, I just got run, this is my ID of web, this is my unique one use token, give me a valid certificate. And then from that moment on, the container runs, gets its own certificate, and then it can bootstrap the secrets. So this is how I solved in my head the bootstrap problem. Because it's a one new secret yeah. that gets past an environmental variable that we all know, and so if it gets logged, nobody cares. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, I like that. That's probably the best solution I've heard of, but... Uh... <laughs> Stop stealing my talk! <laughs> that's another question. The question was, how does it compare to Vault? Uh, how, so how does QWiz compare to Vault? Um, <laughs> can you speak into the cube? I think they are here, the Archicol guys, so maybe they can talk about like five minutes. About so we thought that it was a bit cheeky that QWiz got so much air time. So since we've got Anand here from HashiCorp, we've decided to give him Two and a half minutes to solve vault. Uh, are you ready? Big round of applause. Go. Okay. So this was also not prepared. I, I didn't even know Keywiz was going to be discussed tonight. So I'm not going to do vault justice in two and a half minutes. I highly recommend going to the website and we have a full hour long talk about it. Uh, but at its heart, basically, Volt is trying to do for the data center what console did. So in some sense, console changed the way we thought about you know, service discovery and configuration and moved it to a decentralized architecture. And Volt is kind of doing that by providing a cryptographic foundation for the data center. And so what I mean by that is there's a few key challenges uh, in a modern data center. One is the secret management problem, database credentials, APIs, SSL keys. How do you manage and distribute and rotate these things safely while applying policy, auditing, doing break glass procedures in case of a compromise? So the secret management is kind of the first and most prevalent problem that Vault tries to solve. Uh, right after that is kind of the PII problem. How do you safely encrypt, store, manage credit cards, social security, session information, all of that? So that's kind of the next tier is then solving that problem. 
And we're working with Akamai right now. They're merging its support to turn Vault into a full uh, internal CA. So you can actually do mutual TLS within your data center, secure your microservice communication end to end with TLS, do dynamic certificate generation, and all of this is integrated with uh, console, console template, soon Terraform, so all of the Hatchery tooling will play nice. Um, he was very interesting enough. I've spent three weeks in the Square office meeting with Tony Aceri and the entire Square team. Um, and so in some sense, uh, Vault is a spiritual successor to Keywiz. We've met their <laughs> It was open source only three weeks before Vault was, so it was total coincidence. I met with their team, it was independently implemented. Uh, and we learned a lot from them in terms of what they did right, what they wish they had done differently, um, and we embedded a lot of that into Vault. So the FuseFS thing I think is super cool. Uh, they've talked about adding support for that as well. Um, right now it can be imitated by just writing using console template to a tempfs volume. Um, and in that same sense, you can pull the power and nothing has ever hit disk. Or you integrate it natively with your app and you don't even go through the file system layer. Uh, the big difference and I think the major leap uh, that Vault has is something we call dynamic secrets. And it's the ability to actually generate on-demand credentials basically. Uh, I said I couldn't do justice. Anyways, check out the website, vaultproject.io. There's a full talk on the HashiCorp blog. Uh,